past, present and emerging. Just let you know that this event is going to be um, recorded again today. So um, we'll, we've all got our cameras off um, and our microphones off anyway, but um, that's just for people who can't join us. Um, we'll also hopefully have some time to um, answer your questions towards the end. So um, if you do have a question about one human race, please drop it into the comment section um, and we'll definitely get to that at the end if we have time. So we're here today to talk about one human race and really the difference your participation will make in this year's challenge. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, last year we introduced One Human Race, it was our first ever year, and it was an absolute success. Um, our goal, we set out to kind of raise $85,000, and that would be going towards our girls' rights and education work that supports 85% of girls in East Pocot who uh, face female genital cutting and child marriage before they're 13 years old. Together, we absolutely smashed that 85,000 goal. We raised 100, over $115,000, and that was an incredible feat. It actually went to supporting close to 300 girls in our rescue schools, keeping them safe and providing them with essential education. So thank you to everyone on this call um, who actually participated in last year's race. I know there's a few of you here who did and um, we're incredibly grateful for you joining us again this year. So this year, and I suppose what we'd like to say as well is, you know, we raised that and it was absolutely incredible, but unfortunately the challenges that the girls face are still there and the pandemic has not really moved that much. So this year we're on a mission to make our one human race bigger and better. And to do that, we really need everyone's support, which is why we're here today. Um, little later on, Cass is going to, Cass, our CEO, she's gonna talk us through the projects which your fundraising efforts will support. Um, and we also have um, Thomason McKenzie, our incredible ambassador here to join us. Um, to talk about her part, her participation in last year's race um, and why she's so passionate about being involved again this year. Got a lovely love heart from Thomason, thank you. <laughs> um, so before I pass on to them, I really would like to just share with you a few of the statistics about why we're here and what we're working to combat together. Hopefully this is going to work. <laughs> so I'm just gonna move that. So. I suppose this is the biggest stat that we're kind of focused around in our East Pocock community. 85% um, of girls aged 9 to 13 years old are subjected to female genital cutting and child marriage. That is just a statistic which I think is quite hard to comprehend for a lot of us, um, but it's happening right now. The UN estimates that 4.2 million girls globally are at risk of undergoing female genital cutting this year alone. And I know that these numbers have increased since the pandemic. And UNICEF research shows that 12 million girls are married before the age of 18 every year. So that's 23 girls every minute, and that's nearly one every three seconds. Um, before I hand over to Cass, I would also really like to share with you Shamkal's story. So Shamkal is one of the many girls who our work has supported over the years. Her story is absolutely incredible and really displays the impact that, um, that our work is having in communities like East Pakot in Kenya, which is what One Human Race is focused around. I'm just going to stop my screen and I'll get that video up.
Okay, so I'll pass over to Cass now. Oh, Cass, you're on mute. Sorry. Is that better? Perfect. I don't normally fall into that, that trap. Um, welcome, everyone. It's really nice to have you all here. Thanks for giving us half an hour of your time. Um, I absolutely love that video of Chumko. Kerry, my co-founder, and I first met Chumkal in East Pakot in Kenya five years ago now, and she was just a wee pop-up, but she came to us uh, in tears because she had just heard that if she went home that day that her mother was going to take her to be cut, um, female genital cutting, and to be sold, and she was so desperate not to lose her education that she had snuck into our microfinance school that we run for women um, and it just so happened that Kerry and I were there at, the, at that time so that's when we first met Chunkal and our, our time with her began and she's now the most incredible ambassador for us of the reason why we're all here today to support these girls who are the, the epitome of the horrible statistic that there is more slavery today than any time in the history of our world so that's what you're all here for today and to become um, part of the solution to solving that, that really big global challenge. So as Ali mentioned, so they can, we're committed to empowering children living in poverty through education. We began 12 years ago now when a local community in Kenya asked us to, to build them a school. Uh, we now have 47 schools across Kenya and Tanzania. Um, we have a teacher's training college in Tanzania, which is ranked number one out of all teachers' colleges nation, uh, nationally, both public and private. We run enhancement programs, uh, which include our women's empowerment program, our community health and development program, uh, as well as our child wellbeing program. So our focus is on the education of both boys and girls. And the reason why we focus on both boys and girls is because they really need to be the change makers for the future. Whilst we can protect and educate girls as an immediate need, unless both uh, genders are educated on the injustices of the girls, then nothing's gonna change. And it's been really exciting to watch the, girl, the boys embrace the education we're giving them around um, how poorly treated some of our girls are over there. Um, they are really strong and working towards supporting the girls. So that's a huge encouragement. So yes, as Ali said, One Human Race, it's, it's our campaign to bring attention to the challenges the girls in our communities face. And accordingly through that, raise a lot of money to implement our projects to address all those challenges. So as I said, we're currently implementing um, projects in our 47 schools to protect these girls. The more money we have, the more schools we can bring on and the more girls we can protect. As Ali mentioned, yeah, that statistic, 85% um, in some of our villages, it's, it's even higher than that, of, of girls suffer female genital cutting and child marriage before they're 13 years old. There's nothing, um, there's nothing good about it. There's a number of things 
culturally that our community on the ground tell me, Cass, this is the way we do things butt out, so to speak. Um, and and um, But this is not one of them. The mothers uh, in our communities, when I ask them why they put their girls through FGC and child marriage, they tell me that every person in the village needs to have a purpose. And if there's no education opportunities for their girls, then they need to be sold to bring in the much needed dowry, one or two goats, to support the rest of the family and feed the rest of the family. Uh, so that's why we decided the solution then would be to provide them with education and the parents are, are really um, getting on board this and if we can support them and get them into these schools, then they will not put them through FGC and will not sell them off because the reality is, is as they're learning, you could sell them at 10 and get three goats, but if they go through to secondary school and um, into uh, tertiary education and come out with a profession, they provide about 40 goats a month for those families so they can see the, the long-term benefits of that. I think it's always really helpful to have sort of a tangible story around why um, this is important and why you guys are, are jumping on this platform to become part of the solution. So one thing that struck me um, about three years ago was I was over in our communities with um, two of my children, two of my daughters actually, they were about 14 and 16 at the time. And we were just wandering around uh, the Nimnyang Girls, which is one of our rescue girls' schools. And I could see them over in the, in the courtyard just chatting with the girls. And they, I watched them. I thought, God, they're just the same on so many levels. Um, they kind of were, were giggling and they sort of were looking at their nails and had their arms around each other. I thought, oh, they're just girls. And then I went up to them and I heard one of my daughters ask uh, one of the girls, oh, you're at boarding school, so you've got school holidays coming up. Do you go home? to your families and the holidays and the girls without knowing that it would be such a shock to my daughters said no no if we go home we'll be cut uh, sorry we'll be um, killed or, or um, kept at home and sold off for disobeying uh, our brothers and our fathers so my daughters suddenly realized it they looked at me that night and they said mum we finally get it that this is all about um, the fact that an educated girl is seen as a person with human rights whilst an uneducated girl is seen as a, a piece of property of the men to be sold for their commercial gain. So that realization for them has sort of spurred my children on. And um, yeah, it was just a very real moment, uh, reminder for me about the importance of, of what, what we're all and so they can trying to do. So um, it's really important for you to know what the money you are raising at, when you join One Human Race will go towards. Uh, I certainly know some of the challenges people are doing out there are, are pretty physically hard <laughs> and it's hard to keep momentum going. And I certainly find when I'm doing my running that um, just remembering that $600 will go to provide education, security and all the pastoral care for one of our girls in our rescue sporting schools for a whole year. So, you know, realistically, it's, it's, you know, however many cups of coffee over the year, and you're literally changing the destination of the girl, uh, the destiny and the future of a girl forever. Um, so uh, what we do as part of that education, so obviously it's the standard curriculum that Kenya and Tanzania provide in their schools. We work in the public school system, um, but we, we augment that with four projects specifically focused towards the girls. So one is our Keeping Girls in School, where we educate girls about their human rights, both internationally and nationally. It's astounding. You sit with these girls and you talk about the, the Convention for the Rights of the Child, um, Article 41, and they have no idea that there are laws out there that mean that they can stand up for themselves and not be sold off. Um, even more so when you say nationally, uh, your own laws in Kenya and Tanzania, it's, a Tanzania, it's illegal to, to, to sell you off and to cut you. So that's been a real change um, for our girls who are incredibly strong and courageous. So they do stand up for their rights now. Uh, we also have what we call our Leave No Girls Behind um, project, where we support primary school girls who do become pregnant as a result of either being sold off or sexual abuse. So we work with them, we ensure that they maintain their education during their pregnancy, that they get accepted back into society after their pregnancy and can return to education in an environment where their child is also looked after. We have this great project called Champion um, Mothers and Fathers, and this is where local mothers and fathers, they sign up to, to come on board as our champions, that it's all voluntary. Uh, and they work in our communities, literally going door to door asking their local villages, village members, is their school aged child in school? If not, why not? How can we support them to get to school? Um, uh, educating them on the reality of, of the impact it will make on the family with when you do have educated children. Uh, and also working with our clinical partners and our, our clinics that we have there 
these uh, champions are told about the realities clinically of FGC and what it does to our girls and the risk it has from you know, immediate death from bleeding out during, during the cutting process to those much more permanent long-term gynecological issues that they have. And then finally, we just have a massive focus on stopping FGC and child marriage for our girls and our communities. Um, as you can see from that chum, chum car video, it's happening today and it needs to be addressed. So yeah, so last year, the, run, the money we raised from one human race was about 115,000, I think as Ellie mentioned, and that enabled almost 300 of these girls to not be cut, to not be sold, and to stay in our um, rescue boarding school for a whole year in East Pocot in Kenya. So we would love to double, triple um, that number this year with your help. Um, and just thank you for, for listening. Uh, it's amazing to have Thomason, McKenzie, are so they can ambassador on board. And I know lots of you um, are huge fans of Tom's as we are. And um, I hope that now, you know, you've come, you've come on this um, because you might have heard from Tom about it and you want to hear from Tom, but I just hope that you also now can see how important, important it is for you to sign up and um, be, become part of the So They Can family to help these girls who through no fault of their own are suffering horrendously in this slave trade that we have at the moment. So I would now um, love to introduce you all to Tom, who really needs no introduction. She's our amazing So They Can ambassador who's been with us for a number of years now um, and has spoken with our communities on the ground and we're just waiting for COVID to, to move on a little bit so um, Tom and I can get over there and, uh, and she can see the impact she's making on the ground. So thank you, Tom. Over to you. Thank you, Cass. It's so um, moving hearing those personal experiences that you've had in Tanzania and in Kenya. Um, and it's also just like great, great hearing them as a reminder that this is very real and it's really important what we're doing here to pay, play our part in helping these girls. Um, so yeah, my name is Thomason. I've been an ambassador with So They Can for about two years now, since 2020. Um, and this is uh, why I wrote down a few notes as to why I was so I'm so excited to be doing One Human Race again about my experience last year. So um, yeah, I feel incredibly proud whenever I'm able to talk on Instagram about the amazing work that So They Can is doing. But to me, being an ambassador is about much more than spreading the word. Since the moment I joined the So They Can team, I've wanted to be on the ground in Kenya and Tanzania to get to know the girls I'm speaking on behalf of. However, as Cass said, COVID and travel restrictions and my own work schedule has made that very difficult. So One Human Race in 2021 was my first opportunity to be involved in So They Can's amazing work in a more physical and 3D way. After walking my first kilometer in March last year, I immediately felt more connected to all the people who we're moving for and to all the people who are moving to make a difference. Being outside and appreciating nature brought me great relief after a difficult couple of years. Having a cause to focus on that is much bigger than myself forces me out of my own head and makes me focus on the experience of others. So I can't wait to be a part of One Human Race again this year and to let the girls of Picot know that people all around the world are excited to be on their team. Um, after being a part of this info session, um, I really hope that a bunch of you sign up and take part in, in One Human Race. It genuine, genuinely was a highlight for me in 2021. And it's something I look back um, really fondly on because not only do, do I know that it, it really made a difference to the lives of these girls in Picot, but after COVID, it really made a difference to my own mental health as well. So um, there are so many, so many amazing reasons to get involved. So yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Tom. That's really awesome. And I think a great, great how you say, like it brings you closer to, um, to uh, the, the cause um, because essentially like you know travel restrictions have been so hard and um, we'd love to get you out there to the girls absolutely to see everyone but um, this is an awesome way that everyone can get involved and play their part like you say. Um, 
Emily, I'm just wondering if you can just unpin Tom, that would be awesome. And then I'm going to just share with you guys, and um, before we take your questions, I'd like to just share um, some of the ways that people are getting involved with us this year. Now, when we first dreamed up this idea, um, it was very much about walking, running, swimming, or um, cycling even to 85 kilometers in the month to support the 85% of girls. But we actually noticed that last year, lots of people um, decided to do other types of challenges. Um, we had people doing burpees, squats, 85 a day. And we thought that was a really, really fun way to take part. We also had a few different uh, groups of people who wanted to take part together as a collective. Um, and they ran or they walked together throughout the 85 kilometers or they actually took it on and kind of separated those 85 kilometers and did it in one day as a team so we thought that we would give you a few ideas um, to take on if you um if you haven't already signed up and you want to do something a little bit more unique this year um, so we've got our classic run walk swim or cycle 85 kilometers in march we've also got um take 85 minutes of exercise a day I think this one's really cool. Lots of people um, are quite keen to get into um, a habit of building an exercise, particularly something like meditation or yoga, um, which does take that kind of push to really build it as a habit, but it's an absolutely incredible thing to do for your mental health and your physical health. So you could do something like that. For teams, schools, universities, and just groups of friends who want to do something together, you could think about moving 85 kilometers as a team or a group in one day. You could go and do a crazy cycle ride together, or if you're really into running, you could go and do a big run. Um, 85 kilometers a day is quite a lot to do, but our CEO Cass is doing that because she's crazy so um it is possible um raywin also someone that works with so they can did it last year um and that was amazing <laughs> well done to you guys for challenging yourself in that way um we also have something like you could do 85 reps a day like i said we had a few people doing those squat those squats and burpee challenges um, and lastly, for the avid cyclists and runners who are just absolutely nuts, in my opinion, um, you could do 85 kilometers a week in March. So there's lots of ideas and you're totally not limited to these. We want to make one human race as inclusive as possible. Um, we understand that for some people, you, you, you're just not able to run or walk. And but there is so many other things that you could do to support the cause. Um, and join and look it is all about fundraising and we'd love to you know raise as many dollars as possible but really sharing the word and spreading the word about one human race is really an impactful thing to do as well if you're able to um, post on social media and tag so they can hashtag one human race in your social posts that would be absolutely amazing anything you can help us do to spread the word about one human race and get involved we'd be absolutely delighted and um, so grateful for that so um, before we just look at any questions, because I'm conscious of time, um, I just want to remind everyone that um, if you haven't already signed up, you can do so by heading over to so they can .org slash one human race. That will redirect you through to our Raisley page, which is our fundraising page for one human race. And you'll be able to set up your own prof profile on there. Um, if you want to join a team or create a team, you can do it at that point. Um, we really recommend personalizing those pages as much as possible um, so that um, people can um, so that when people are donating they really feel connected to you and the cause okay so I'm going to just stop sharing my screen um, and I'm going to look at some of our questions here so um, oh and thank you everyone for letting us know where you're dialing in from we've got Quite a few people all around the world. We've got some people in San Francisco, which is great. Hi, Fred. <laughs> um, okay, so we have a question from Harrison. Um, Cass, you might be um, able to answer this one nicely. Um, hello, you said you had 47 schools. Um, uh, you said you had 47 schools set up. 
do the children have any fees to pay or is it free for them to attend school? Thank you. Just gonna unmute you. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, yeah, great. That's a great question, thank you. Um, uh, we, we partner with a, the government uh, with everything that we do. So we work in public schools um, so that we feel that we can reach the poorest of children and so that it's got that sustainability aspect for when we exit from the schools um, after we've empowered them uh, for them to continue on. So uh, it is a public school and no, there are no fees as such to be paid, although in saying that they do have to pay for textbook and stationery and school uniforms, which can sometimes be prohibitive. So that is where our enhancement program, such as our women empowerment program, we have microfinance for women comes into play because we support the women to create their own businesses and that uh, the profit that they get from that enables them to provide the, the resources that the children need for school. So it's very much a holistic approach when we when we move into a community with education and those enhancement programs to economically empower the communities around the school. So good question. Awesome. Thank you, Cass. Um, Tom, I wonder if you could just answer this quick question. I wonder if you mind. Someone's asking what you're planning to do this year as your challenge. Just unmute you. <laughs> Hello, um, I am planning on walking slash running, but I do have a bike that I don't use as much as I should. So I'll, I'll, I'll try to, um, to get that out, dust it off, get all the cobwebs off of it and then take it out of the garage as well. Um, yeah, but I really like the idea of doing the um, 85 kilometers as a team. I was messaging my friends the other day to make, make sure that they were getting involved somehow. That might be a bit of extra motivation for them. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one to do, definitely. Okay, cool. We're going to hold you accountable to those kilometers. Ali, I, <laughs> I think we should get Tom to show her T-shirt and let everyone know that they oh, can yeah. buy a T-shirt like Tom's. Yeah. Yes, we do have those t-shirts available actually. Um, if you go onto the One Human Race page, um, you can um, you can go onto the One Human Race page, scroll down and you'll see the option there, you just click on the button, that we actually need to get those orders in ASAP, I think, towards the end of this weekend. So if you do want a t-shirt like Tom's, definitely jump onto the One Human Race page and place your order um, soon. And hopefully register first and then <laughs> Uh, we do also have a great question from Matthew. Um, hello, how would you recommend we further educate ourselves on this and similar issues? Um, thank you for everything you're doing. Much love. Much love back to you, Matthew. I think I might hand that over to Cass again to answer. Yeah, thanks, Matthew. That's a, a, another great question, and I appreciate you wanting to learn more. Um, I would start off with um, going onto our webpage, so they can.org, and if you go under um, our work, you'll see all of our programs and projects outlined there. And there's a, quite a lot of detail in there about the need um, the need in the first place, uh, what we are doing, the work in our projects and the impact that's making, as well as we have our monitoring evaluation reports there to demonstrate uh, both from an uh, empirical and a theoretical uh, evidence, exactly the, the numbers that are changing and the impact that's having on the communities. Um, we also have a resources page which talks about other articles that are out there amongst this. Um, there are other uh, uh, great um, organisations which is building awareness such as Global Partnerships for Education and um, they talk a lot about this area as well and Girls Not Brides is another good sort of advocacy um, uh, partner that we work with that's also involved in this area. But if you've got any specific questions you can also always email me at so they can. Awesome. Thanks, Cass. And yeah, just I suppose as well, just adding to that, just following us on social media. Um, we try to educate our community as much as possible about um, these issues and others um, surrounding our work. So um, if you are passionate and interested to learn more, that's definitely another great place to, um, to start. Awesome. Um, I'm just looking at some of the other questions. Um, so we Okay, so we have a question here from Fakiri. Um, 
He's from uh, Jakarta. Thank you so much for joining us from Indonesia today. That's amazing. Um, I want to ask about So They Can. The mission is about saving um, young women in education in Kenya, basically. Is So They Can's campaign doing the sustainable development goal number four about improving quality education and five about gender equality. Sorry, my English is a little broken. That's fine. Yes, absolutely. So our main focus around the sustainable development goals, which we're obviously incredibly focused around um, being a sustainable development organization um, is SDG4, which is the education one. Um, and then yes, we have a bunch of different sustainable development goals that we're actually leaning towards, which kind of tie into that as a um, as an enhan or enhancement level, we're working towards sustainable development goal five, which is gender equality, the one that you have spoken about there. Um, and also a, and a bunch of others actually, Cass and I are having a bit of an email chain this morning about it. So um, we're also working towards obviously number one, which is no poverty, two, no hunger, three, good health. We have um, Healthy Communities Project, which basically supports the health of all of the communities we're working in. Um, number six, clean water and sanitation. We do a lot of work around um, providing communities with clean water. We're actually also drilling some boreholes in, in schools so that schools have access to water and they don't have to, girls don't have to walk um, hours and hours a day to collect water for their school communities. Um, it really goes on and on. So yes, just to answer your question, we're working towards so many of them and we are actually in the process of building a global goals um, page on our website. So if you stay tuned, we'll share that on our socials soon and you'll be able to learn more about all the goals that we're tackling towards. And maybe Ali, just for those that are unaware of the SDGs, it's the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals that um, all the partner countries are working towards by 2030. Thank you so much. Well, we're going to wrap up here because we are conscious of everyone's time. It's lunchtime um, in lots of different areas. Um, but thank you so much for joining us. Tom, thank you so much for being here with us and taking part in One Human Race. Cass, of course, thank you so much for all your time and your dedication towards everything. Um, and we hope to see a lot of you signing up if you haven't already to One Human Race, um, www.sothecan.org slash One Human Race. Um, is where you need to go to do that. This session is going to be rec is recorded, so we'll be uploading this onto our YouTube channel. If you would like to, um, if you'd like to watch it again, share it on your social media, or share it with some friends who couldn't be here with us today. Um, that's all. So thank you for joining us, and um, thank you for being part of the solution. And we look forward to taking on the One Human Race with you in March. Thank you, Ellie. Thanks, Tom. Bye, See everyone. You.